morning everyone welcome back to the channel welcome back to the yorkshire dales and also welcome back to my craggy throat croggy throat whatever you want to call it um so i was supposed to be doing sunrise this morning supposed to be uh fog and mist as well woke up this morning looked out the car and it's just well, you can see moody grey clouds and no fog or mist so I rolled over and I went back to sleep I've been shattered after the previous bad night's sleep I was really tired last night Fortunately, I actually managed to get half decent sleep last night. Um, I don't know, I just managed to get warmer in the car and not keep waking up because I was cold. So, bonus, got about an extra hour's sleep. And also, getting some break in the clouds. I'm going to swing you around this way. Getting some light coming through as well. So... Speaking of moody clouds, this week's video, I actually want to talk about moody images and moody skies. Because not everything is about beautiful sunrises that I didn't get this morning and beautiful sunsets that I didn't make it out for last night because I was too busy feeding red squirrels. Hop back to last week's video and you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I have a, a plan in mind today and I'm at this place that I've never been before, but it looks beautiful. Got a little stream down there. So yeah, I'm gonna keep walking down this bit and hopefully should be at the destination in a few minutes. Okay, so look at that. So I'm down at the old gang smelting mill ruins. Um, this is probably one of the best examples of this kind of thing that I've seen in the Yorkshire Dales. Now, apparently Swaledale, which is the area I'm in, and also the area where Kelders as well, where you've got Crackpot Hall. Apparently there was loads of these mines around. Um, I think they were for smelting the ore down to lead i believe and to do that they needed water so i wonder if that's part of the river swale then but yeah obviously in kelds you've got the river swale and stuff and there's quite a few sort of those areas around kelds that they're not in as good a condition as crackpot hall so yeah Seems to be a bit of a theme from this trip, this uh, this time in the Yorkshire Dales. Old smelting mines, but no, genuinely, this one still has, if you look next to Brian, it's chimney intact, which is fantastic. So I've just been taking some pictures at ground level. But this, I mean, look at this. I don't know if I'll be able to point it out to you. There's another one over here. Yeah, over here on this bank. I'm gonna swing round. There's all this behind me. There's even more up on the hill. Up there as well, you can just see that little knobbly bit. Loads of them, this area. There's some even to my right hand side as well. I'll stop swinging you around though. Now, yeah, I want to get a good vantage point with that in the background looking down the valley because I want to focus on this whole moody images thing. Now, there's one thing in particular I want to focus on moody images. I mean, I'm blessed with the sky and the fact that light keeps breaking through. It's making some really nice contrast. But I want to talk about black and white. 
Something a lot of people nowadays neglect when they're doing their landscape photography is black and white photography. And I do as well, I love it. But I don't do enough of it. And I suppose it's a case of trying to find things that lend themselves to it. And this is a prime example. Ruins and castles and all this sort of stuff. Historical elements really lend themselves to it. Old buildings, yeah. But let's see if we can go find some more shots that'll work out beautifully as black and whites. Oh, I tell you what, I'm like a kid at Christmas at the minute. For those of you who actually know me know I love historical things like this. I wouldn't say I'm a history buff by any stretch of the imagination or anything like that, but I love historical things and, and stuff like this gets me really, really excited. Um, but unfortunately, I'm running out of time as well, which is really annoying. So I've actually managed to position myself higher up to actually get a better view. And I've also managed to get some views down at the valley as well. I've tried to be creative with some of the other ruins as well. But obviously with the river and stuff, you can see obviously you've got the old gang there. You've got the mine there. The place is full of grouse. Unfortunately, there's shotgun shells everywhere as well, which makes me really quite sad. But yeah. So you've got the river running there, you've got these pointing down, you've got the old gang, oh, this place is beautiful. Um, and if I had more time down here, then I just, I wouldn't leave. Um, yeah, so I think a sunrise would be really nice here. But I think the time of year needs to be right. Also as well, so I think um, I told you before, actually when I was in the Yorkshire Moors, that I have a series of books that's called Photographing, and then it's the Yorkshire Dales, the Yorkshire Moors and the Yorkshire Coast, uh, the Lake District, things like that. So I've got all this series of books. And in the Yorkshire Dales, um, it does say that it is good down here at um, heather season. And if you look around, you can see why. So if you've got that plumage there as well with a nice morning sun, yeah, oh, this is definitely going to be a return. I'll tell you what, the place where I actually stayed last night as well, no phone signal. Phone signal two minutes down the road though, which is brilliant. And it's so quiet, so peaceful. Yeah, it was the perfect place to stop for a night as well. And it's about a 10, 15 minute walk from here as well. So yeah, proper happy with that. Right. Let's have a look at these shots then and continue this theme of moody photography. Okay, so that's old gang done. 
and it's just getting a bit chilly as well. A little tiny breeze has just picked up and whoa, it's cutting right through me, I tell you. Anyway, yeah. So, old gang done. I'm hoping that those images came out all right when uh, converted to black and white. I think with the skies and the contrast and the light and everything, I think they just work. Now, I know I've focused on black and white photography here for creating moody images. Um, and that's because I love black and white photography anyway. I really, really need to do more of it. But it's just finding the right subjects that lend themselves to it. And I knew this one would. Anyway, other elements that you can use as well to help create moody images. Long exposures. When you've got skies that are looking quite moody. Oh, blimey. That's just gone horrible now. It's just like a grey sheet. Um, yeah, when you've got moody skies like we had the first thing, um, if you strap on some uh, ND filters and start doing some long exposures utilising those streaks in the sky, also combines well with black and white. Um, but it depends if you've got really nice contrasting dark streaks and lighter streaks and stuff, really can help... Um, create that moody feeling another one as well which i've already mentioned which ties in with black and white as well is really contrasty shots now obviously you don't want it bright blue necessarily um in the sky but if you get those cracks of light and stuff coming through and and creating sharp contrast in your images that really does help add to a to a moody feel if you can combine all three then go for it um but there you go yeah get out and create some moody pictures guys it's really good fun um and yeah something i i, I say being into history and stuff like that i get proper excited when i find old ruined buildings and stuff like that um there was a little sign on there saying it's under conservation as well. So hopefully places like that will stick around. Now, where I parked the car up, there is a um, another area as well. As opposed to old gang, it's called Surrender. No idea why. Um, but it's literally like I woke up this morning, looked out my car, and it was right behind where you park your car. There's a little parking bit in front of a bridge um i say little it's actually quite substantial and it's really nice cute little waterfall just coming down from the dales there Ooh. just down there i'm not going to grab a picture because i say times are ticking um does look nice i did see that on the way in um yeah so you park your car up in this fairly substantial car park if people park properly um and yeah, you've literally got surrender behind you. You cross over this little bridge and you've got this bridal way all the way down. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, preserving things like that, part of the history is just, yeah, makes me smile, makes me happy. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm done here. I say I'm going to have a look at surrender and see if I can get a decent image from that and I'll pop it up at the end. It looks like literally it's a case of I can take the image pretty much from the side of the road. I saw it when I was walking to this one. So we'll see if that comes out. If it does, I'll stick it up at the end, obviously, as I usually say. But yeah, right, obviously, if you've liked this video with regards to creating moody images and utilizing black and white photography, Give us the old thumbs up, drop some subscribes from down the bottom because I'm hoping to make one more video from the Yorkshire Dales before, uh, yeah, heading home. It's a fair old drive home, so fun times. And yeah, this is Mike out. Take care and be safe, everyone. Peace.